This video is brought to you by my fantastic supporters over at Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash tjtheemperor to find out how you can support the channel. And now, our feature presentation. Hi friends, this is part three of the complete Xenogears reference guide. As always, if you notice anything I forgot or got wrong, leave me a comment about it, and if I get enough of them, I'll make an addendum video and give you credit for whatever you found. Alright, enjoy the video. After their tour of the cathedral ends, the party regroups at a house in Nissan, where Shitan and Sigurd make a startling confession. Both are actually from Solaris, the shadowy nation that's home to Gebler. The two of them tell the others about Solaris, that it's hidden in the sky behind distortion fields called Gates, and that they kidnap surface dwellers for both slave labor and for use as guinea pigs in scientific experiments. There are a couple things we can mention here. First, now that we know more about the true nature of Solaris, we can better understand the myth we heard Nave. The country of the Great Ancients is Solaris itself. The logic of the myth suggests Solaris once ruled the entire Earth before a period of rebellion where their authority was confined to their territory above the clouds. Someday soon, though, Solaris will re-establish dominance. The myth has clearly been disseminated to create submission before their re-emergence from the shadows. Second, knowing all this shines light on the name Gazel. If Gazel is, in fact, meant to suggest something taken by force, then it's a perfect name for those from Solaris. They've taken the Earth's surface by force. The last thing to mention about Solaris concerns the name of their capital, Etrenanc. Etrenanc is an adaptation of the word Etamenanki, the ziggurat devoted to the god Marduk that stood in the center of ancient Babylon. This seems an appropriate name for the location of those who seem to view themselves as closest to God. The party formulates a plan. If they want to deal with Gebler, and by extension Solaris, they first need to depose Shakan and reclaim the throne of Ave. To that end, they begin to plan an attack on Ave's military, the heart of which is a battleship called the Kefeinzel. Now, alright, I want you to bear with me here for a second. I don't actually know if Kefeinzel means anything, but to me it sounded German, and I found that it is indeed possible to construct the word Kefeinzel into German. Kef is apparently a term referring to marijuana or any other euphoric drug, while Einzel can be translated as single. The term is used in German, for instance, to refer to playing singles tennis. So translated literally, Kefeinzel could mean a single person or thing that's under the influence of euphoria-inducing drugs. And the thing is, you could make the argument that that name, if that is what it means, is meaningful. We're told that the Kefeinzel is commanded by Vanderkam, a man who's illogically devoted to old-school warships as opposed to gears. So Kefeinzel feels an appropriate name for the ship commanded by a man who is singularly devoted to antiquated war machines to such an extent that it seems like he's high. Is this all bullshit? Probably. But I couldn't not mention it. I've been recording these voiceovers for like two fucking hours. I need to do something to stay sane. All right, let's get away from all this nonsense and jump ahead to the actual attack on Ave and Gebler. Ellie is fighting alongside the rest of the Gebler squadron in her Gear the Vierge. Sorry if I butcher the pronunciation, my knowledge of French is bad. Anyway, Vierge is the French word for virgin. It's probably meant to reference the constellation Virgo, as one of the conventional name schemes for Gears in this game is that of the constellations. I don't think this has any deeper meaning, with one exception being that if we remember the name of Phase Gear, Veltal means universe or cosmos, then it suggests that Veltal is somehow set above those other gears that are only named for lowly constellations. One more thing needs to be said about the Vierge, and it's about the design. It's clearly meant to suggest the Kubelay, a mobile suit featured in Zeta and Double Zeta Gundam piloted by the villainous Haman Karn. The pink and grey color scheme has, to my knowledge, been used nowhere else, and if that wasn't enough, Vierge's Air Rods attack is nearly identical to an attack used by the Kubelay called Funnels. Like I said, there's a ton of Gundam references here, and they keep coming during the scene where Faye and Ellie have a conversation after Ellie is out of her mind on the drug called Drive. Many others before me have pointed this out, but this conversation is quite similar to one in G Gundam between protagonist Dolon Kashu and the pilot of Neo Sweden, Alan B. Beardsley. Alan B. Wait! Remember that we were aspiring to something else. I don't think we were hoping for a fight like this. That's right. We fighters understand 
The only way we know how to express our feelings is through our fists. So, Allenby, I've got no interest in fighting you now, since at the moment, you're fighting without your soul. Meanwhile, Groff makes his return appearance, sharing his mysterious power with Vanderkam and his machine, the Dora. Dora was the name of a real piece of military hardware, specifically the second generation model of a German railway gun called the Schwerer Gustav that was used in World War II. As if that wasn't bad enough, an ominous red gear enters the battlefield and causes nothing but chaos in its wake. Ramses seems to know exactly who this is, a figure he calls the Demon of Elru. Though it's not mentioned here, Elru is another continent in Xenogears world, and as expected, it's another reference to the Jewish calendar, this time to the month of Elul, the sixth month, roughly corresponding to around August or September. In response to this terrifying new visitor, the Yggdrasil decides to fly over the gear, which is said to be possible thanks to the Bernoulli effect. Believe it or not, the Bernoulli effect is an actual scientific principle. Wikipedia defines it as an increase of the speed of a fluid that occurs simultaneously with a decrease in static pressure or a fluid's potential energy. Unfortunately for the Yggdrasil, the Red Gear uses its power to actually hold the sand cruiser in the air. The gear causes massive collateral damage. In the midst of the destruction, one of the crew specifically mentions that the third bridge has been destroyed. This is a reference to the classic sci-fi anime Space Battleship Yamato. The third bridge of the Yamato was routinely destroyed, and following that series' runaway success, having the third bridge of a battleship destroyed has been something of an in-joke in subsequent sci-fi anime. The end result of all this chaos is not good for our heroes. The Yggdrasil is basically destroyed, and Faye has been captured by Kislev and imprisoned in their capital, Nortun. We're shown that the leader of Kislev, Kaiser Sigmund, has been told of Faye's recent capture. Now, the name Sigmund could be a reference to one of two things. In Norse mythology, Sigmund is the father of Sigurd, but the name could also be a reference to Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis. At this point, we don't know which one is correct, so let's just move on. Later, Sigmund meets with a large, fishbowl-shaped ship. I don't believe the name of the ship is ever mentioned in the game itself, but Perfect Works tells us that it's called the Ezekiel. Ezekiel, Hebrew for God is strong or God strengthens, is the name of the prophet responsible for the biblical book of the same name, most famous for his visions of the chariot of God in the first chapter, and of the New Jerusalem in the concluding chapters, both of which were profoundly influential to John of Patmos when writing the book of Revelation. Who exactly is in command of the Ezekiel is something we're going to have to save for later. Right now, let's go back to Fey, who's found himself in Nortun's D-Block prison section. As a new prisoner, he's subjected to what's called a baptismal ceremony, arranged by a gang of prisoners under the lead of the battling champ, the prisoners in question being Suzarn, Vargas, Heinrich, and Leonardo. As far as I can tell, these names, memorable as they are, are not references to anything, although I am willing to guess that Suzarn was probably meant to be named Susan, given that she's female and the two names are acceptable romanizations of the same name in Japanese. If anyone can tell me if there's any other greater significance with these guys, uh, let me know. Anyway, we're introduced to the champ, a demi-human named Rico Banderas. In Perfect Works, when discussing Rico's design, Takahashi makes the comment that if he looks familiar from other games, that's just in your mind, obviously meant to be taken as a joke. Looking at his design, red hair, green skin, somewhat bestial appearance, he's probably meant to be a reference to Blanca from Street Fighter. Aside from that, he also seems to draw a lot of influence from G Gundam's Argo Golski. Both are dangerously powerful prisoners, both wear bombs strapped to them to keep them under control, and both, as we'll see in a minute, are made to participate in mech battles. Moving on, we jump to a scene in a room with a giant spherical computer and eight smaller computers rotating around it, each one projecting a face. We're not told this right now, but these eight computerized faces are the Gazel Ministry, the highest ranking governmental body in Solaris. The Ministry speaks in a famously cryptic manner, which isn't helped by the fact that their conversations are routinely not translated well. Smoothing out the rough patches of those translations is beyond the scope of this video, but if you're interested, I suggest going to the Xenogears and Xenosaga study guide, which has a section devoted not just to the Gazel Ministry scenes, but every other problematic or unclear translation in the game. Anyway, I'll make this brief. In their cryptic pronouncements, the Ministry mentions something called the Anima Relic, as well as the Animus. Remember what we mentioned during the Nissan scenes, and we'll put a pin in that for later. They also mention something called the Geisha Key, we aren't going to find anything out about what this thing is right now, but I can discuss the origin of the name. 
Geisha is meant to be spelled G-O-E-T-I-A, pronounced Goetia, and is a synonym for black magic derived from a Greek term meaning sorcerer. Furthermore, a portion of the Lesser Key of Solomon, a grimoire written in the 17th century, is called the Ars Goetia. Faye ends up reuniting with Shitan, who's come to the prison in his capacity as a doctor to help him escape. Together with Hammer, a supplier in the prison, they decide to try to win a special pardon by becoming the Battling Champ. Battling is a direct reference to the 1983 mecha series masterpiece Armored Trooper Votoms, directed by Ryosuke Takahashi, who, if you remember, also directed Panzer World Galliant, the source of Bart's gear design. Just like in Xenogears, Battling in Votoms is a kind of gladiatorial combat sport using giant robots. It's a major plot point in the first story arc of the show, where protagonist Chiriko Kuvi is persuaded to join the ranks of battlers while taking refuge in Udo City. The idea that Votoms was on the minds of Xenogears development team has been all but confirmed. An old post on scriptwriter Kaori Tanaka's DeviantArt page mentions that she's of an older generation who grew up with the classic robot shows from Studio Sunrise, and names Votoms specifically as one of the shows in question. As Faye climbs the battling ladder, the tournament is interrupted when Faye is framed for a series of murders of battlers, Rico's subordinates included, in the Kislev sewers. Faye, Rico, and Shitan are forced to infiltrate the sewers and find the real murderer to clear Faye's name. This entire portion of the game draws heavily from the works of Stephen King. The murderer in the sewers derives from it, and the name of Xenogear's sewer murderer turns out to be Red Rum, which is of course murder spelled backwards and an obvious reference to The Shining. Red Rum is killed, and Faye's name is cleared. Unfortunately, their problems have just begun, as Solaris declares a purge on the people of Kislev. Ellie's squadron is taking part, with Ellie and the rest of her crew aboard a ship called the Hecht. Now, when I first heard the name Hecht, I thought, wow, a reference to the great 20th century American poet Anthony Hecht? I can't believe it! And I was right to be skeptical, as believe it or not, it's not actually named after Anthony Hecht. The word Hecht, which is actually German for pike, as in the fish, is the name of a German submarine manufactured near the end of World War II. We'll come back to the Hecht in a minute, but right now we need to go back to Faye, who's once again visited by Wiseman, who reveals that he was the one who brought Faye to Lahan three years ago. He then tells him what he knows of his father Khan's backstory, and also that his mother's name is Karen. We've already discussed Khan when we mentioned Shah Khan, but Karen is a reference to the psychoanalyst Karen Horni, whose theory of neurosis will be very important later, but right now we have to move on. Ellie, who's uneasy about the Purge, is pushed onward by Dominia, a fellow Gebler officer and one of the four members of the Elite Elements Task Force. Dominia is named after the Dominion, one of the highest of the Nine Orders of Angels. As we'll see, this is a recurring theme among the remaining three members of the Elements as well. Now let's discuss Rico's attempted assassination of the Kaiser. There's no way to adequately talk about this without going into a bit of background detail, so bear with me for just a second. Rico's hatred of the Kaiser originates from anti-demi-human sentiments that caused him and his mother to be chased out of town, with his mother dying shortly thereafter. As if that weren't enough, the game does not spell this out directly, but the Kaiser is also Rico's father. Kaiser Sigmund's name, therefore, is probably a reference to Sigmund Freud after all, with his son reenacting a disturbing variation of the Oedipus Complex. Meanwhile, the Purge proceeds on schedule, using a plan Dominia calls the Ship Bomb Hecht. Basically, this entails crashing the Hecht into Nortun's reactor, destroying the city instantly. Faye, Rico, and eventually Ellie, who's grown disgusted with Gebler's actions, attempt to thwart their plans by using their gears to push the Hecht off course. This is meant to directly mirror the final scene of the Mobile Suit Gundam movie, Char's Counterattack, where Amuro Ray, aided by several other mobile suits, manages to push the asteroid Axis out of a descent course into Earth's orbit, in an event known in Gundam lore as the Axis Shock. There's one major difference, though. Amuro was successful in veering Axis off course, while Faye, Rico, and Ellie could not completely prevent the Hecht from crashing. They do, however, manage to veer it away from the reactor, significantly lessening the damage it could have caused. One more quick note about this scene, specifically about Rico's gear. Its name is Stier, the German word for bull. This is obviously another zodiacal reference, this time to the constellation Taurus. After the chaos subsides, the party, aided by Hammer, decides to sneak into a Kislev factory and hijack a massive flying battleship called the Goliath. This is probably the most obvious reference in the entire video, but the name Goliath refers to the character from the biblical book of Samuel. He was the colossal Philistine warrior that the young David managed to kill with only the use of a slingshot. 
The name Goliath has been the synonym for anything big ever since. They manage to capture the Goliath, but their plan eventually fails in a rather hilarious fashion. Bart, in a newly repaired Yggdrasil, assumes it must be an enemy vessel and shoots it out of the sky with his signature weapon, the Bart Missiles. Watching this all unfold, there's several parties from Solaris, and through them, we're hit with a bombardment of new references in a very short span of time. Ramses, aboard his ship, studies the readouts of the Goliath explosion, and not actually being there to witness it, wonders if it's Shavat's Apel Aura. We already know Shavat is the UFO-looking floating continent in the sky, but what's Apel Aura? The translation makes it sound like a weapon, but in actuality, Apelora is the name of Shavat's capital city. Reference-wise, this name is actually kind of interesting. Apel, according to Strong's Biblical Concordance, is Hebrew for gloomy or dark. In addition, Apel suggests the word Apelion, the point in the orbit of a celestial body where that body is furthest from the sun. Both are terms connoting darkness, which is an amazing coincidence considering that Apel is Hebrew and Apelion ultimately derives from the Greek Apohelio, literally meaning away from the sun. I don't know if the developers recognized this, but it's an interesting coincidence nonetheless. As for aura, while the word commonly connotes a kind of mythic energy field, it could also mean a ring of light. The second meaning is obviously more fitting for what is literally a giant ring floating in the sky, but all this leads to another question. Why would this floating ring, that makes its home close to the sun, have a capital whose name is derived from a term that suggests darkness? I'll wager a guess later. For now, I'll move on to Groff, who appears behind Ramses and tells him the gear he's been searching for, the Demon of Elru, is headed for Akavi. Akavi is another continent on Xenogear's world one primarily composed of water, which is more than appropriate for a place whose name derives from the Latin word for water, aqua. As they prepare to pursue, Ramses is brought one additional message from someone named Kelvina. Kelvina is another member of the Elements, named after another high order of angels, the Cherubim. The scene then shifts back to the Gazelle Ministry. Speaking of the man Ramses is pursuing, they say, and I quote, So it was the trauma. Nay, in this case, Nigret. It was the severe external wounds. What the hell is Negret? It's actually not a reference, but I'm going to discuss it here because it can easily be misconstrued as one. I mean, it's capitalized in the script. It must be a proper noun, right? Actually, Negret isn't a real word at all. It was put in the Japanese script by accident and wasn't caught in the localization process. Kaori Tanaka herself confirmed the word is supposed to be written neglect, which makes much more sense given the ministry is talking about some sort of trauma. The opaque words continue. When discussing the subjects that possess the animus factor, one of the Gazelle asks if it's the Sufrati, the subject of the M project. This is, to my knowledge, the only time the word Sufrati is used in the game, so I had to consult Perfect Works to find out what it means. And apparently, Sufrati just means components to be used in the M project. I have no idea where the developers got this word from. Doing a Google search only brings results related back to Xenogears itself. If anyone has any idea, even if it's just a guess, let me know, because at this point I'm just curious. Anyway, the Ministry goes on to say that they've detected something in Akavi, near the Thames. The Thames is a floating city, and its name is worth talking about, because I'm almost positive that it's an error. So it's spelled T-H-A-M-E-S. So I've always pronounced it as Thames. However, it's spelled the same way as the English River that flows through London, which of course is pronounced the Thames. This makes sense in a way, given that it's a water-based city, but then I got curious and decided to look at the Japanese pronunciation. And in Japanese, it's named Tamuzu. Tamuzu, when romanized into English, can be written as Tamuz, and Tamuz is, surprise surprise, the fourth month of the Hebrew calendar, corresponding to around June or July. I know that romanizations can vary depending on who's translating, but in this case, I think Richard Honeywood made a mistake, and I'm going to continue calling it Thames because that's how I've always said it, fight me. According to the Ministry, one of their agents, Krellian, is in the area. The name Krellian is a reference to one of the main characters in the Arthur C. Clarke novel Childhood's End, where his name is Karelin. In the novel, Karelin is the leader of the Overlords, a group of alien beings who've traveled to Earth to guide the evolution of the human race to a higher state. There's more I can say about Krellian, but that's going to have to wait until later. 
I will, however, say that this Krellian is the one who commands the Ezekiel, that giant fishbowl ship I referenced earlier. Krellian is in Akavi because he's found the 4,000-year-old ruins of Zeboim, a long-destroyed civilization that's home to a trove of nanotechnology. Zeboim is another reference to the Book of Genesis, one of the five cities on the plain that was destroyed by God in fire and brimstone for their wickedness. I'm sure you're all familiar with their more famous counterparts, Sodom and Gomorrah. Midway through the conversation, the Ministry is joined by the mysterious Emperor who's spoken with Shitan several times in the past. As it turns out, the man is Cain, the leader of Solaris. Cain is another obvious reference to the Book of Genesis, the first son of Adam and Eve, infamous for killing his brother Abel. This reveal raises a number of questions. Remember, the people of Solaris call themselves the Shepherds, or Abel. What does it mean when the Solarians call themselves the Abel when they're ruled by someone named Cain? Perhaps even more pressing, why is the leader of Solaris in private communique with Shitan? We're not going to get any answers right now. Cain and the Ministry continue talking, and some members seem to criticize Cain for continuing to believe in something called Ananelbi, who will eventually learn as a messianic figure destined to lead mankind into a new age. Ananelbi is a misromanization of Ananerbe, a German word that in English means ancestral heritage. Now, this is just wild. Ananerbe was a real organization in Nazi Germany, created by Heinrich Himmler under the aegis of the SS, which was an academic organization designed to provide scholarly evidence for the Nazis' bullshit theories of racial superiority. Now, we've seen, from the game's use of terms like Jugend, that Nazi-themed references are not new to Solaris, but why on earth did Takahashi decide to use this specific word to refer to this specific concept? Honestly, I don't have a clue. I have one more reference to discuss with regards to the Gazelle Ministry, and it concerns their names. The game itself does not name them, but Perfect Works provides a list. Enoch, Erod, Mephael, Metshael, Lamech, Jabal, Jubal, and Tubal Cain. These names are all derived from the fourth chapter of Genesis. They're the names of the descendants of Cain, fitting for a group of men who seem to be subordinate to Cain in the Solarian hierarchy. 